again, we have these very different perspectives and each one of them will approach the field of psychology in a little different fashion. Uh, the first one here, psychodynamic perspective. Psychodynamic theory is a psychological theory that Sigmund Freud came up with. When he was doing therapy, he would call that psychoanalysis or psychoanalytic work. Uh, dynamics is the theory of personality that he came up with. So there's Freud right there. Uh, in the psychodynamic tradition, behavior is explained in terms of instincts, biological drives, and attempts to resolve conflict. Um, aggression and anxiety become very uh, prominent themes. We'll talk about this more, uh, but the major thing that Freud was concerned with was the unconscious. The behavioral perspective is the next uh, major perspective. We'll have an entire chapter um, from the behavioral perspective. The key figures here are John Watson and B.F. Skinner. Uh, the behaviorists don't care about cognition nearly as much as just overt behavior, behavior that can be objectively recorded. That's Skinner right there and Watson. Humanistic perspective, the key figures are Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow, emphasizes an individual's inherent capacity for making rational choices and developing to maxual, maximum potential. The term self-actualization is a central theme in humanistic psychology. There's Rogers and Maslow. Cognitive psychology that looks at human thought and the process of knowing and thinking. Be they think that behavior occurs because people think. They look at different ways of thinking. The biological perspective focuses on the functioning of genes, the brain, nervous system, endocrine system, neurophysiology, like neurotransmitters. And so it's looking at the structure of the brain and biochemical processes in the brain and in the body and how that affects behavior. The sociocultural perspective looks at cross-cultural differences and that, the consequences in terms of behavior. And the evolutionary perspective, uh, the key figure is Charles Darwin. And actually, the evolutionary perspective is very important. Um, and Darwin comes kind of before uh, Sigmund Freud. And Darwin really opened uh, up the study of man um, as an animal. Um, now, that might sound kind of weird, but prior to Darwin's time, if someone had a psychological disorder or behaved in an odd way or something like that you know people would just kind of take it for what it is and they might say well it is that people are that way because God wanted it to be that way and that was the end of it with the introduction of Darwin's theory of natural selection the importance of behavioral and a mental adaptiveness to changes in the environment became very important and Darwin really opened the door to the study of man in that perspective. So there's Darwin right there. Now, we've gone through this, and this is a good introduction to the field. A lot of times people really just want to know what psychologists do. What is it that they do? Well, the book kind of divides it into these areas. I'll talk about this a little more in detail. Uh, but psychologists engage in psychological inquiry. They formulate questions to be researched. They conduct various forms of research and they apply psychological principles. But what does that really mean? Well, look, there's two broad areas. There's like experimental psychology and clinical psychology. And there is a good deal of overlap between the two. But there's going to be a huge chunk of psychologists that are in independent practice or working with patients in some other setting, like a hospital or a clinic. That's typically clinical work. So about half the pie here. So clinical psychology would be working with patients or clients in delivering psychological services or doing psychological assessment, applying psychological theories that are based on science. Now, on the experimental side, you'll have 
psychologists work in academic settings, uh, business, government, lots of different areas. And that is, again, a little less than about 50%. I mean, those are just rough percentages. And they are more like the uh, research side, like the experimental side. So they wouldn't work with uh, patients or clients at all. I know psychologists that have never even seen someone with mental illness in professional practice. A lot of psychologists that work in an academic setting are trained that way. So they're more trained in research. I mean, my background is both. So I do both, lots of people do both. Um, those are just some uh, samples of where psychologists work. So that's it for this chapter. This is just a brief introduction. I know some of the stuff is confusing. Um, you need to know a handful of those names uh, to begin with. Um, but we're going to revisit almost all of those psychologists that we talked about earlier in the chapter in future chapters. Um, so again, welcome to the class. Read the book. Watch the screencasts, look at the PowerPoint slides, take notes, whatever it is you have to do to succeed in this class. It's going to be a lot of work, um, but if you do the work, I promise you'll do good in the class. Uh, but it requires some effort on your part. So what you put in, hopefully you will get out. Um, if you have any questions, contact me.